you see this plant in your backyard, don't step on it. This neglected plant is more delicious and nutritious than most garden plants in the world. If you pull out the seed to protect your crops, you throw away something much more valuable. Calorie for calories, Herschling is one of the most nutrient-dense foods on Earth. It also has the highest concentration of omega-3s compared to any leafy green vegetable. On top of that, you can take advantage of its anti-inflammatory properties by turning it into a poultice. This is just one of the many neglected plants that might be
Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. If you'd like to come in and join us, we are going to start. Welcome to our night of worship, Ridgeline's night of worship. We're glad you're here. We're going to worship. We're going to praise. We're going to jump around a little bit. But we're also going to have some healing. We're going to have some prayer. Just um, we're going to have a great, great evening of fellowship. And above all, glory to the God. Glory to our God on high. Amen. So let's stand. Come on in. We're going to start out. It might get a little loud. So let's go ahead and start it.
get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Pick me up. Turn me around. Place my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Cause you healed my heart. Changed my name. Ever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. Good evening and welcome to Ridge Lines Night of Worship, where tonight you can get healing, you can be free from addiction, you can have your relationship restored. We're believing that here. Just come and worship and praise so that you can connect. I hope you guys enjoy.
that right now. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We just say you're worthy today. You're worthy today. You're worthy today. You're worthy today. You're so worthy. You're so good, Lord. You're so good. You're so good, Jesus. You're so good. We give you praise. Let's just do that just for a moment. Let's direct the affections of our heart towards our Heavenly Father. It doesn't have to necessarily be a loud expression, but, but just from, from, the, the, uh, from our heart, we direct our affections towards the Father, and then everything that we do subsequently becomes praise and worship. And so, Father, we just here in this moment tonight, we just direct our affections towards you. Direct our affections towards you. We praise you, Father. Because you're so good, Lord. You're so good, Lord. God, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sin, you, you, you died for us. You died for us. You died for us. Because you're so good. Because you're so good. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your goodness.
Thank you that in order to know you're good, we don't have to look any further than the cross. We don't have to look any further than the cross. In Jesus' name. take communion in just a minute, but first, we give the band a hand. And we're so grateful uh, to have Pastor Sergio and some folks from ABL City, and we, we, borrowed, we borrowed their drummer as well, and so thank you for being here, and, uh, and, uh, but every, everybody came together. It's been, um, the band is incredible. You guys are doing amazing, and we're going to keep worshiping in just a minute, but in just a second... Uh, we're going to take communion, and it's right over here. So if you'll uh, make your way, come grab a, a communion packet thing, and, and then uh, greet. make sure you greet someone uh, on your way, especially if you don't know them, shake their hand, ask them their name, and then uh, make your way back to your seat, and we'll partake together. So there is this uh, unique speculation in Scripture that the Apostle Paul, who was converted to Christianity on the road to Damascus, um, which uh, if you ever have a chance to go to Israel, they'll show you exactly where that is, they think, like where they think everything is. Uh, they don't know where anything is for sure, so it's kind of weird to go there, and they're like, this is where Jesus died. <laughs> Maybe. And this also could be where he died. <laughs> We're going to both places today. So, you know, whatever you think is fine. <laughs> we don't know any better. So, uh, but there, there's, this, there's this interesting thing that happens with the Apostle Paul is he, um, he can't see when he, he's on the road to Damascus. He's, he's, there's a loud voice. He has a vision. He's struck. He falls off his donkey or whatever as he's traveling. And then, then he can't see and he goes and he, uh, he gets prayer and then he can see again. And then, then he goes through this um, kind of like mentoring process for several years to be, uh, off to be alone. Uh, or, or like, and nobody exactly knows where, where he went or how the Apostle Paul got mentored. And there's lots of speculation. One of the, my favorite speculations on this is that it was actually Jesus Christ, the, uh, who had already been ascended back to God the Father, that personally mentored who we would later refer to as the Apostle Paul. 
And one of the indicators of this that I, that I, or that I think is an indicator is that, that Paul talks about Jesus like they, they met and, and that they were kind of firsthand, like they had a thing. They had a, like Jesus told me this himself personally. Now, of course, for all of us who hear the voice of the Lord, we could probably, you know, word a sentence that same way. But, but Paul does it seemingly over and over again where he seems to have direct insight from the person of Jesus. And this is kind of one of those portions of Scripture. And, and the, 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 Paul's account of communion which there's the accounts in the gospel, right? But, but Paul's account, and he would not have been there, but Paul has this really great account of communion in the cross and what it means to partake in the, the elements of the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. Almost like he was there or like he heard about it directly from the source. And this is what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is the Apostle Paul writing, and he says in verse 23, he says, For I received from the Lord, that's Jesus, I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, there's a lot of theological hang-ups on what all of this means, and, and do we believe that this actually is the blood and body of Jesus Christ or just a representation of the blood and body of Jesus Christ? And for questions like that, you'll have to ask Pastor Sergio. But Jesus took some bread, and Paul quotes Jesus' words. I'm not sure how, but he quotes Jesus. And then in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, and this is Jesus again, this is my body, or this cup is a new covenant in my blood, excuse me. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. There's this interesting uh, kind of word or phrasing that we see in the Old Testament over and over again. And, and if you could go Bible story through Bible story and you would see it multiple times, probably like a dozen times throughout the, the Old Testament is that it's this that, and then God remembered Sarah and da da da. And then God remembered, Ahab, and then God remembered this person or that person. And it's like, I didn't think God had a forgetful problem. And then you read the Old Testament. He's like, he keeps having to remember things. <laughs> like, it's like talking to Grandpa, right? <laughs> like, Grandpa, you told me that story already. But, it, but there's, this, there's this kind of this Jewish concept with time in the Old Testament. And, and, and to be honest, I don't quite comprehend it all. But they don't see time as linear. They see it as like reciprocal uh, or it comes around. And that's why there's so many unique number things that happened in the Old Testament. And, and, and like 50 is the year of Jubilee, right? And, and it, it comes around every 49 years, this, this redemptive year. And, it just, and so they see time as it just, it's a big circle versus a line. And so it's not that God forgot something. It's, it's that it came back around to the right time. It came back around to the right time. And then here Jesus uses the same wording as we would see in the Old Testament. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And, and would it be that us as believers would come to a point where we bring ourselves back around to the cross on a regular basis? And, and, and in communion, of course, and corporately and with, uh, with our church family and, and all of those things. But may it be that like on an individual level, on a daily level, that, that we would remember again the cross. That we would remember again Calvary. 
that we would remember again. It's not that we ever forget it, but it's like, like we, we're, it's this picture of what's happening in the Old Testament that we come back around to the remembrance of what Jesus did for us on the cross. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim. I love this. The act of communion is a proclamation. The act of communion is a proclamation. You, what, are we, uh, what are we proclaiming? The Lord's death. Until when? Until he comes. Therefore, whenever you eat this bread or you drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, you will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself. I, I love this. There's a, whole, there's a whole thing here about examining yourself before the Lord. Oftentimes, we, we would refer to that portion as, you know, like you got to make sure there's no sin in your life. And I, I don't think that's what it is. Because then he goes on, the Apostle Paul goes on to talk about, and here's the reason why you're sick, by the way. You, you've got sickness in your body. And some of you are dying before your appointed time. Here's what I think Paul's saying. That we partake of this unworthy when we separate out or segment out everything that Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. When we segment out that, yes, this is my forgiveness of sins, but, you know, healing, I don't really know about that. This, this is, you know, this will, you know, help restore my relationship, but, but I, don't, I don't know about if it will heal my soul. This will, this is good for some things, but, man, I, I don't know about all the other things. And I know the definition of sozo is, you know, health and wholeness and, and prosperity, and it's all those. And, and some of those things I'm okay with, and some of those things make me uncomfortable. And so I'm going to partition out what Jesus accomplished on Calvary, and then we partake of this unworthy. Because we're not willing to accept the fullness of what Jesus did on the cross. And so here's what we want to do this evening for just a moment. First, we're going to partake together. And then second, we're going to pray for healing. We're going to pray over those who might need a healing in their body. Because I, as I would say, just as, as a pastor, as a church, as a whatever, I, I refuse to segment... what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross of Calvary. And I believe Paul specifically was addressing healing because he talked specifically about, to the church in Corinth, about being sick. And so I think that Paul, with his great insight into Jesus, either firsthand or not, he seemed really passionate about that when we take communion, we don't miss the element of healing. We don't miss the element of God wants to heal. That Jesus paid for your healing at Calvary. And so, let's stand. And if you haven't already, you can open your, your styrofoam cracker. And if you've never had one of these, they're disgusting. And so we're going to pray together. And if you're sick in your body today, if you're sick in your body, then I want you to take this, just being grateful for the power of the cross and the healing power that what Jesus accomplished on Calvary. Okay? Just if it, maybe it's mental health, maybe it's pain in your body, maybe it's a, a diagnosis of some sort, whatever it is, I want you to partake of the, the, the body and the blood of Jesus, just thanking God for the fullness and completeness of the cross, which is our forgiveness of sins, which is our healing and wholeness, which is our prosperity, which is all of those things. And we're not segmenting out any parts because we're uncomfortable with them or because, you know, our theology or what, uh, I don't know. No. Let's not do that. And so, Jesus, we thank you for your body that was broken for us. 
we thank you. We don't take that lightly. I can't imagine the pain that you went through physically in your body. And, and then on top of that, the emotional toil. So we thank you for the body of Jesus being broken for us. So let's do that now. Let's break it and then partake. I told you it was bad. Just like disintegrates. But the good news is the juice is no better. So, Father, we thank you for your blood that was shed, that washes away all of our sin, that washes away all of our sin. We thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you that you who knew no sin became sin, so we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You got what you didn't deserve, so we could get what we didn't deserve. And so we just say we're so grateful for the cross. We're so grateful that the cross purchases restoration of our relationship with the Father, forgiveness of our sins, healing and wholeness, safety and prosperity. It, it purchased our protection. We thank you for the fullness and the completeness of the cross. In Jesus' name. We've got a couple of worship or uh, prayer team people. If you'll come, probably just two, one on each side here. And if you're here this evening, you know, three, any, any, you, could, you can all come. It's all right. It's all. If these guys get full, the rest, I don't know who is designated, so the rest of you can come, but one on each side would be great. Yeah, there you go. And if you're here this evening and you would like healing in your body, then these people uh, would love to pray for you for healing um, and, and agree with you and declare healing and wholeness over you as we continue to worship. And so, um, Father, we love you. Father, we love you, and we honor you, and we're so grateful for the fullness of the cross. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for restoring our relationship back to God the Father. Jesus, we love you. Thank you. You're our high priest and our sacrificial lamb. In Jesus' name, amen.
Tell me
job this evening. You guys sounded amazing. You did well. Thank you. Thank you. You did amazing. So we're going to, they're going to, we, they are going to sing. <laughs> they're going to sing one more. And, uh, and so as they sing this last song, I just want to declare a few things uh, over you this evening. And that is, man, we just speak to dreams tonight that are dead. We say, come to life. We speak to um, finances where, that have seemed to have dried up, and we just say, come to life. We speak to relationships that are hurting. We say, come back to life. We, we speak over uh, uh, kids that are far from, from the Lord, prodigals. We say, come to life. Um, we speak over parents that the, the, where the relationship is estranged, and we say, come to life. And we just say, o- over God dreams and God visions and ministries and all the things that have, that have been on the inside of you that have died, we just say, come to life. Be resurrected by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.
much for coming and we have more next year. So join us. Woo! Thank you so much. Have a great night.